Hi, I'm Tom Meehawk, and this is my personal finance course. This chapter is called Estate Planning. Now, you may think that estate planning is for affluent people. Some of you, you may think, why do I need to do estate planning? Well, we just covered the chapter on retirement, and estate planning follows well out of retirement planning. There are some elements in retirement planning that overlap to estate planning, but estate planning is critical. Certainly it's critical, more may be critical for people who are more affluent, but it's critical for everyone. It involves everybody. Let's take a look. This is the uh, character Carson from the Downton Abbey series. Behind him, the, one of the main locations in the series, the High Clear Castle, um, where the Downton Abbey characters lived. And you might think, well, I have to have a castle like this and an estate like this to need to do estate planning. Well, not really. An estate consists of all the property a person owns or controls. Estate property also includes all other funds generated upon the person's death, such as through life insurance. Now, when I prepared for the to, pre to make these slides, I pulled out my uh, study materials for my Master's of Science in Financial Services. And you know, there's a binder this thick, and then a binder this thick, and a text this thick, and then another text above that. There's so much information. It's very nuanced, highly legal, and summarizing it to put in the form of 20 some slides uh, was part of the challenge. This sounds like a very detailed legal explanation, but it includes items like your cash and your personal effects, security, stocks, bonds, investments, real estate, all the things you see here, including life insurance, life insurance, death benefits, business interests, and those kinds of things. Chances are you do have an estate. Now, what is estate planning? Estate planning is a plan done during your life to administer and dispose of your property when you pass. It's a very important part, really, of retirement planning, which is to accumulate assets through your investments and your savings and managing your money through your insurance, your effort, and your oversight, and then disposing or transferring it to those that you wish to transfer it to at your death. In translation, as you live your life, you're accu you accumulate things, wealth, other assets that your survivors and your charitable interests, survivors being spouse, children, other loved ones, charitable interests being maybe your church, nonprofit, your alma mater, other organizations that you would like to support. And these are groups that you should uh, plan to, to uh, that are planning for or being planned for after you passed to receive assets that would benefit from receiving or being planned for after you pass. Now, let's take a look at some poor estate planning examples. The first in the upper left, Prince, of course, he passed without a will. He died what's called intestate. And we're going to talk about what that means in a second. But not only did he die without a will, he was worth about $200 million. Now, the thing is, if you're worth, and we're going to talk about when you need to do estate planning and what the elements are, what you should have included in it. But if you're worth $20,000 and you're 25, okay, wait a while. When you're $200,000 and 35 and married and young children, you should start thinking about it. You should probably have a will and a durable power of attorney and a healthcare directive even then. But when you're worth two, two million or 20 million or 200 million, you should know you should do some planning. You have to plan for where these assets are going to go should you pass. Well, Prince didn't do that, and it caused lots of problems among his six siblings and half-siblings. Apparently, a federal inmate claimed to be uh, a son of the singer, and it took forever to determine. It was up to a Minnesota judge to determine what was going to happen. To his right, Heath Ledger. Now, Heath Ledger had a will. He left everything to his parents and three sisters. But the problem was he had a two-year-old daughter and he left nothing to the two-year-old daughter or her mother. Now, the family later gave the assets to the daughter, not the mother, but the daughter who was their, now their relationship, relation. Um, 
But life-changing events like having a child are a definite time to change and update your will and your estate planning. In the lower left, Michael, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson had relatively good estate planning. He had what's called a pour over will where he used trusts to be receptacle for transferred assets after he passed. But the problem is that he didn't register any assets in the trust. And so the trust was not effective when he passed. Now this could be, this is a, a very good planning technique, but because no assets were registered with the trust, it didn't get used. Assets were probated. His information became public. By the way, he didn't have $200 million net worth. He had a $500 million net worth. Even more problems. His mother and uh, children lived off of an allowance of apparently $8 million a year, while it took an exec his executor, the estate's executor, and a judge years to figure out what was happening with his estate. In the upper right, James Gandolfini, lead actor of The Sopranos, died suddenly in Italy in 2013. He had a grown son and a uh, young daughter from two different, from a previous son from a previous and young daughter from a current marriage. He gave money to nieces, godson, 30% each to two sisters, 20% to his daughter, 20% to his wife. By doing so, he didn't take advantage of, of um, gift tax exemption. His son apparently inherited or received the right of first refusal of a New York City condo, and I'd read also a parking spot, but the son was a minor child. What's it going to do with a condo and a parking spot? He left property to his son and daughter 50-50 in a trust in Italy. In a trust, it was an Italian property. Point is very complicated. I've said this when I teach this, and I don't know this for certain, but it sounds to me like Gandolfini had the attorney that did his real estate and did his contract negotiations, his compensation agreements, also do his estate planning. Definitely have an expert do your estate planning. You don't have to pay a fortune to do that, but have someone who specializes in wills, trusts, <clears throat> excuse me, durable powers attorney, and those kinds of things do your estate planning for you. Now let's talk about some good estate planning, some smart estate planning. Robin Williams. Robin Williams also used to pour over will, revocable trusts. But because the revocable trust is a private document, his bequests were all private. No information, no news. Nobody knew anything. Nobody knows apartments, parking spaces, nothing. He also used two irrevocable life insurance trusts. All that means is they were irrevocable trusts, meaning they were not his property. They were separate from him, separate, completely separate entities from him that owned life insurance that he or his advisors designed to pay a death benefit to the trust when he passed. And they did that. And so most of his apparently $35 million estate was uh, consisted of a winery, which was illiquid. And that could have created huge estate tax issues, but the trust, uh, the trust that owned life insurance were funded and that created liquidity, which enabled the estate tax to, to uh, be paid. A similar situation happened in the previous slide with Joe Robbie. Joe Robbie was the owner of the stadium and the Miami Dolphins. You noticed when you saw that picture, it's in the bottom. It was in the 70s and Robbie had no liquidity. And, when, and the IRS requires a, a state tax filing within nine months. And so the Miami Dolphins had to be sold. This is the slide before one more bad example of estate planning. Another good example after Robin Williams was Steve Jobs. And this is Steve Jobs and his wife, Laureen. Apparently his wealth was about $7 billion when he passed, consisting of Disney stock and Apple stock. He um, used trusts. Now, he may have willed everything to his wife. I'm not sure I like that verb, willed, but he may have transferred all his assets to his wife when he passed, which would have kept it quiet too. But certainly the use of trusts, irrevocable trusts, but trusts in general would help keep 
the transfer out of probate when he passed. Uh, the news says that you can look up and see that the trusts that are that were funded with his assets in Apple and Disney have been selling shares. And by the way, it's interesting, uh, shocking actually, that he passed in 2011. It's been almost 10 years. But the point is, is that everything passed quietly. Nobody really knows exactly what's been happening. We can you can look up and see sales of these stocks, Apple and Disney, by the trusts. It looks like what's happening is advisors are helping them diversify their assets. No longer do they have concentrated positions in Apple and Disney, which would have been something you would think Jobs would do, right? Stay invested in the companies that he that he built. So good example, bad examples, and good examples. What do you consider when you do estate planning? Consider your loved ones, your spouse, your children, other family, parents, siblings, close friends. Taxes. Consider taxes. For sure. The amount transferred to whom, when, and how much access they have. Put your affairs in order while you're still of good sound mind to be able to do it. You don't want to have someone hand you a pen, you know, when you're on your deathbed and say, sign this, sign this. No, do this with, you know, good pen and do it while you still can and while you have uh, all your mental facility. Non-traditional households, too. It's vitally important to do estate planning. Same-sex marriages long marriages, long relationships where there's no marriage. These are critical situations because state laws differ. Every state's different and not every state recognizes each of those situations similarly or even maybe at all. And so as a relationship or in a beneficial way for transfer from an estate planning standpoint. So make sure if you're in a same-sex marriage or a long relationship with no marriage or other non-traditional that you get expert help. Review regularly and update is vitally important. Don't establish a plan and then assume it's finished. Go back and look. And we're going to talk about triggers that tell you when you should review. Certainly, every, review every five years or so, but other things will be good triggers to tell you. And intergenerational communication promotes effective planning. Sometimes this is an awkward conversation. Some people have a bias against this. The older generations that presumably have the wealth don't want the younger generation dissuaded from working hard. And there are ways to get around that. You can, for example, have younger generations inherit at 30, 35 and 40, 35, 40, 45, not until 40, something like that uh, to prevent spendthrift behavior. But intergenerational communication in my advisory career, I have found to be very helpful when older generations, the generations with the assets, talk to younger generations and tell them what their planning is, who the guardians are, who the executors are, who the advisors are and that sort of thing. This is the end of the first segment of the estate planning chapter of my financial planning course. Come back for the second in just a second.